I'm at the point where I'm going to read you this week's installment of Ezekiel Craylin's story that uh, generally has been about the two little dogs, Falaco and Lucky, but it seems to be lately about the uh, uh, lawsuits involved in a, an eviction process and, and fighting that and learning about the law and dealing with things like that. And this is titled Fuck Em All. So apparently we're back to the dogs and their, uh, their master, Deke, not Zeke, but Deke, who lives uh, downstairs and out in the weather. Ezekiel Kralin wrote, Fuck Em All. Email correspondence, April 13th. Subject, answer or dismissal? That is the question. Continued. Date, April 13, morning. By the way, I just sent this email to my eviction attorney. Can you recommend a reputable process server? Tons of them out there, and Yelp reviews are less than trustworthy. Thanks. She might say she can't advise me because it's out of bounds with her service on my behalf, or she might do one of two other things, either refer me to a reputable process server or offer to deliver my reply to the plaintiff's attorney via her own hand or that of one of her assistants. My opinion on the matter is this, because she referred me to the GG bar claiming they should handle my case for free, but it backfired. She ought to at least be glad to perform the process serving through her office, saving me money and headache. Signed, Zeke K. Holmes. Correction. The proper form is most likely a general denial, not an answer, which former paper is much simpler to prepare. I thought it wasn't applicable in my case because the summons is for more than $25,000, for which an answer, more complicated to fill out by far, is the proper way to refute any charges. However, if the complaint is not verified, a general denial is suitable, even when the demand exceeds $25,000, and if the complaint doesn't involve a claim for more than $1,000 that has been assigned to a third party for collection, neither is the case for my summons. Most complaints are not verified, by the way, which means they are not witnessed by a notary public, and the complaint will say verified somewhere in its pages, usually at the end. Easy peasy. What a relief. P.S. I just mailed off my acknowledgement of receipt via the local FedEx outlet, which is across the street and one block up. Another easy peasy. Lovely, warm, cool day. But hot in my room because the stupid radiator is chugging away like a boss and I can't do anything about it. This has been a problem for my building since time immemorial and through many iterations of managers. Fuck them all. Well, hmm. Subject, scratch the general denial, must use answer. Date, April 13, early afternoon. Whoops, I just found out the general denial defense requires you write just one sentence. So I definitely need to rebut via the PLD-PI-003 answer form. It's not that hard to fill out now that I've taken a closer look, so moderately easy-peasy. I take this latest scenario as but my bodhisattva guardians, who include all parties involved, putting me through my paces as a sort of stress test, a challenge to overcome the sudden wallop of anxiety dumped on this war-abiding pilgrim. I've met the challenge within a very short span of days and only need now to focus on performing a peerless rebuttal on time as well as on the bullseye. Subject, and here's what else I'm going to have to put up with soon. Date, April 13th, mid-afternoon. Here in Hotel California North, see PIC. It's a notice taped up in the lobby and in each hallway. April 12, 2023. To all tenants of Dolores Apartments, San Francisco, California, this is to inform you that as of April 28, 2023, Allied Teamwork Construction, Inc., will be commencing construction within the hallways and on the building as pre the city of San Francisco's soft story requirements. If you have any questions or comments, please contact your apartment manager. Thank you. Subject. Response from my eviction attorney, date April 13th, late afternoon. She didn't recommend a process server, but did say, Mr. Kralin, I just wanted to inform you that even if plaintiff wins that lawsuit, you are considered judgment-proof because you receive Social Security. It means that your Social Security is protected from creditors and they should have no way to collect the judgment against you. 
So I replied, I understand that, but my concern is that a dismissal would not make the false allegations go away, but be directed at the other defendant, who is the landlord. And since these allegations would stand, I would be highly vulnerable to being evicted. That is why I've decided to go ahead and fill out the PLD PI-003 answer form instead of requesting a dismissal. I have not been able to find any answer regarding if dismissal of the main defendant would result in carrying over to the carrying over the allegations to another defendant or not. Various online legal sources have been no help. I also visited the SF Law Library but couldn't find out if my concern is legitimate and none of the reference librarians know. And the books they showed me to read do not answer that either. The next LARC workshop is not until April 21st, when hopefully that question will be answered to my satisfaction. Deadline date to deliver my reply is the 26th, so I'll have very little time to finish preparing. At any rate, my plan is to go ahead with the answer rather than a dismissal, because it's very important my denials go on record. Later on, during the mediation, perhaps, I will inform the plaintiff's attorney that my sole income is Social Security. Re-response from my eviction attorney, date after April 13, later afternoon, Watson wrote, Christ, drop by drop as the clock ticks, you're getting bits and pieces of answers. I replied, like pulling teeth, but I'm getting the job done. I sent another email to Ms. Elvinsborn as an addendum to the previous one, quote, and they might kill the dogs because of the accusation they are vicious and dangerous. I suspect the building manager is coaching the plaintiff with misinformation and exaggerated allegations. He has been very hostile toward me for a long time now, especially regarding a conflict I had with a couple of residents, mother and son, down the hallway in 2021. The way the plaintiff's charges were written has the manager's fingerprints all over them. Worst allegation is that the plaintiff claimed he had to get rabies shots, even though I have proof the dog's vaccinations are up to date, as does the building manager through snapshots of their rabies tags and the vaccination papers that I texted to him. He could easily, he could have easily shown such evidence to the plaintiff, or I could do that myself. And this is but one important reason why I believe an answer rather than a dismissal is the best way to go. Keep in mind that I have yet to be shown proof of any dog bite. Subject, latest meetup with Deke was awesome. Date, April 13th, nighttime. Bet you thought I'd never say that, eh, Watson? This was yesterday afternoon. He started right off the bat by playing the old Abbott and Costello Who's on First trope in that he stirred up confusion over his weekly payments. To my not-so-surprised ears, he asked for another, quote, $80.00. So I explained to him his next payday wasn't until this Sunday, four days away. What? he challenged. You've been paying me every Thursday. Why next Sunday this time? No, I replied. My first payment was on Monday, because that was the third of the month. So I gave you $80 on that day, which was for Sunday the day before, and Thursday same week. You've lost track because you keep asking for advance payment and don't bother to keep count yourself or use a calendar. So you say you're paying me the right total amount for each month. It's just my asking for advances makes me wait sometimes for 10 days till my next payment. I don't understand, because it looks like you're shorting me a whole week's worth every month. The above quote is a condensed version of his obfuscating rant that lasted over 10 minutes. He asked why he only gets 40 at the end of the month sometimes and not the full 80, among other nonsensical claims. I tried explaining to him how my paying him $80 per week is based on $40 twice a week, Sundays and Thursdays, but the last week of any month often overlaps into the next month in such a way as to truncate Thursday's payment. Or Sunday gets truncated instead if the first Thursday of that month appears before the first Sunday, or something like that. My brain morphs into a whirl of befuddlement just trying to unravel his naughty reasoning. You need to see my calendar, Deke, then you'll understand. I replied in exasperation, because he just would not let up and kept squawking in circles like a chicken with his head cut off above the larynx. 
as if it were some sort of Santeria conjury that, if kept up long enough, would somehow grant him possession of my soul, and that transform into a mesmerized zombie and enunciate in a monotonous, deep, slow timber, timbre, is that a T-I-M-B-R-E, timbre, okay, you are wrong, I apologize, and hand over another 40, or even 80 buckazoids. Glob help the Cajun tramp for not comprehending that while there are definitely four weeks in every month, all months have two or three extra days tacked onto the end, except February, which has exactly four weeks, but not leap year, of course, but try to explain that to him, the uneducated miscreant. I must have told him three or four times, you need to see my calendar, but each time he cut me off with the same retort while waving a dismissive hand and strutting like an alpha rooster. I don't need to see no fucking calendar. Yes, you do, Zeke, I'd reply in a sing-song manner each time. Be that as it may, I said, okay, you'll get your money, but be aware that at the rate you're going, you'll have to wait maybe 10 or 12 days before next month's first payment. I don't know, Watson, I guess I need to make things simple for the brat, like telling him, look, you get four eighty dollars payments per month, so you should get no more than two allotments before the middle of the month, and the remaining two after that. But I'm definitely going to have to show him a calendar so he can see why he gets just $40 towards the very end of some months. Jeez Louise, how exasperating. I bet he'll refuse to even look at the calendar when I bring it to him, sketched on some old envelope lying around in my hovel, one from Medi-Cal, Social Security, EBT, or just some junk mail, because he'd rather keep the guilt game going than concede. Or more likely, he's jiving me just for the fun of it. One thing I've noticed about Deke is that when the pressure is on in my world, outside of his pesky machinations, he always backs off to give me some emotional wiggle room by ceasing his gripes and acting kindly. And it's not like I tell him anything about this or that crisis I'm going through. He just seems to sense it. Two examples. One, he was mostly magnanimous through those winter deluges, rather than behaving like a panicked fool, which made it much easier to tend to the pup's survival and well-being. Two, whenever I had to do bed bug prep, which takes two or three days, depending on other things happening in my life, he wouldn't mess with my head, thus allowing me to get things ready with minimal angst, even during those lovely months when the doggos were my divine furry guests. I did tell him before he left me last night then I'll be very busy for the next two days, and I won't be available until after 6 p.m. Oh, you're never busy, he mocked. What's so important you won't be home for so long? I made up a story about working with a lawyer to get back at some notorious thugs whose only sport is to wreck other people's lives, especially the homeless, that I've been after them for years, but something's come up recently where I can finally tie a noose around their necks. And I helped the lawyers by researching stuff for him, at the the lawyer, rather. I helped the lawyer by researching stuff for him at the SF Law Library to help him build our case, I further explained. But, of course, he then queried, Are you getting any money for that? Of course not, I snorted. But it's something I'm being called to. Going to save a lot of lives, and the time to strike is now. He respected that, and I've had the whole day to myself to further prepare for my lawsuit and get this latest tale churned out and delivered unto your ethereal hands, Morticia. So yesterday's meetup was remarkably pleasant, including his silly rant described above, for he wasn't explosively argumentative, but just a pain in the ass in a non-combative way. He thanked me twice for all the good things I do, once when he first showed up and then upon his return in the evening. And when he asked for a couple more bungee cords, I saw he already had three, so pointed out that there are new expense for me. I only bought ten for this month. I can't afford any more. Why doesn't he hold on to the ones I already give him? He cheerfully replied, Oh, that's fine. I can make do with what I have. No worries. He sat out front for just an hour before taking off. I helped him get his bicycle rig prepared for his homeward journey by holding on to it to keep it stabilized as he used the bungee cords to secure some large, heavy sacks along with his Bluetooth speaker resting in a small wheeled cart, not an arrangement suitable to ride, but fine for walking both overburdened bicycle and the brindlekin, with great difficulty for most, I might add, but not for their master. In short, Deke was 
very friendly and in good spirits yesterday, which went a long way to lighten my heart, considering this ugly lawsuit for which I'm forced to be my own attorney. His thoughtfulness changed everything for me, boosted me into this stratosphere of love. I had a delightful time with Flacco and Lucky, as usual, but with the unexpected bonus of so many passers-by complimenting me for the loveliness of those canines, including when I was taking them for a stroll. I parked them right outside of Maury's shop to purchase another box of trash bags. While standing at the counter where Maury was registering my payment, some gay person stepped in, sort of handsome, tall and around 40 years old, and while waiting his turn to purchase something behind the counter, such as booze or cigarettes, he suddenly addressed me. Those dogs of yours are just adorable. So I told him, thank you, I agree, but they're not my dogs. They belong to a homeless friend of mine. I then elaborated further, describing how I've always discouraged him from adopting a dog, because I think it's cruel to force such sweet creatures to live on the streets, but he did it anyway, so I had to accept that and have been helping him take better care of them for the past few years. I finished with, and now he has a tiny cabin to live in as of late January, so the dogs are happily housed, finally. Upon those words, Maury interjected with a wide, friendly grin and said, Zeke's been a loving caretaker for those dogs, and, I might add, for his homeless friend, too. Well, congratulations, the fellow declared with a smile, directed at yours truly. Job well done. To be continued.